Welcome to another episode of From One Screen to Another. My name is Larry Lane, and today we are talking to Jeff and Danielle from the Babyface Assassin podcast. I've been helping them make things for their podcast for a while now, and I really wanted to get them on as guests to basically kind of get tips and advice from them because they've been doing their podcast for a year now. They're coming up on 55 episodes, and when it comes to creativity, it's very, very useful to talk to other people who are doing something similar to you and are already paving the way. So that's what this conversation is. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And without further ado, here is Jeff and Danielle. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know who you guys are, why don't you take 60 seconds and introduce yourselves? All right. Well, my name is Jeff Fieldhouse. I'm a stand-up comedian from Pittsburgh. I uh, host a podcast called The Bayface Assassin. I also, before this pandemic, also did a once a month all art show where we did comedy, art, and music. Hi, I'm Danielle Vernick. I am the producer of the Babyface Assassin podcast. We drop every Monday, um, and it's a podcast where we like to just have a bunch of people on, creatives, and just have a good conversation. Quality is definitely our priority. The one nice thing about your guys' podcast and why I wanted to get you on is you guys have a longevity to you guys and a consistency. Uh, as we talked about this upcoming uh, Monday, you guys have episode 55 coming out. And uh, the one, one, of the, one of the many great things about your guys' podcast is the consistency and the quality where you guys are always having new guests, interesting people, and interesting conversations. It's, uh, it never feels like the same thing twice. So since you guys, when you started, you know, 55 episodes ago and where you are now, what do you think are some of the biggest things that you guys have learned? Well, I've always loved podcasts. I know that was like my main go-to thing, especially like towards the end of high school, like when podcasts were still considered kind of weird and there weren't really a lot of genres. I would like find different comedian podcasts. My friends would be like, you're just listening to people talking in your car. Like, what are you, a psycho? Like, you're not listening to music. But I've just always been in love with just hearing like, different perspectives and even if you don't want to read a book you can still get like awesome knowledge by that author you know and then it will inspire you to read that book so when we made a podcast like you said we just wanted to make sure it was interesting you could always learn something so the main thing i learned from each episode is something that uh danielle our, our producer always like implements for every episode is just sit listen and pick your words with tweezers like really try to like actually play tennis with this person have a back and forth instead of having an agenda of questions um, I think with the podcast, one thing like I've really enjoyed is just anytime you take anything seriously, you want to build a foundation. And I think building a foundation is so can be it can be really unique. Like you, it's whatever makes you want to keep going creatively. And with our podcast, we just try to drop an episode every Monday. And our goal was to make every episode we do the best episode yet. So, like, our intention was always, all right, well, this week's episode, let's put as much time and energy as we can into it to put out a better product than last week. And that's why I think also, like, I think it's important when you grow a brand to grow in front of the people. And when you go on our Instagram page or Facebook page, I think it's cool that when you scroll, you can see our growth. And I just want that to continue every week. I mean, it definitely seems like it is. Um, between looking at your guys' upload, seeing the view number increase, as well as uh, whenever you guys started putting the videos up on Facebook, and uh, just seeing how you guys are using the multiple platforms to get the attention and get out to new people, um, it's just been fun to watch you guys grow. Now, with you and Jeff, I feel like you guys balance each other out very well with the podcast. Uh I, I, I can imagine, and this is speculation on my part, that Jeff is the like Jeff is a fun and great host, but I feel like as a producer, you wrangle him in sometimes. Uh, what's what's it been like working with each other on the podcast? I think it is anytime you do anything with your significant other that's like more in a business sense, it's a challenge. It's a challenge on your relationship because this is something we talk about all day long. Like, we are constantly, like, we'll be making dinner and, like, which is randomly talking about it, like, waking up in the morning, first thought, what do you got? You know, like, we, it's always on our minds. So it's just, um, we, it's a lifestyle at this point. Like, I just accept that Jeff 
loves being creative and he always has and that's something I love about him and it's not necessarily something that I do personally but I love helping him and like he's he's a flower and I just want to water him and help him grow and like that's just what I do behind the scenes. How about you Jeff? Yeah, uh, Exactly like what Danielle said it was one of those things where Whenever I first started, it was mainly my idea as like a, a comedy podcast where I wasn't just having comedians on, but generally I wanted to bring the comedy out of most things. And one thing that Danielle really helped me level up in life is I grew up with a lot of anxiety and depression and Danielle like implemented like meditation. She implemented like exercise and just like, she's very good at helping you like see things that seem so big and like making them minuscule and actually like taking the time to look at it. So a lot of the time in the podcast where you see it get to the point where we're talking to the people and it almost feels like a therapy session because it gets like we're talking very deep and it, we're implementing like a really cool self-help vibe that like at the end of each episode, me and the person look at each other and we're like, wow, we really created something. And that's something that like Daniel and I have always bonded over so much. So I think like you said, one thing of us being able to blend that together is every episode with like working questions and working things together. Daniel always finds a way to like weirdly just like either doing research on the person or just like talking to me throughout the week, finding ways to like implement more like um, genuineness into like the interview. So I think like, I'm just very grateful that with both of us together, if I was just doing it by myself, I think it'd be more of a comedy podcast, but with her, it's more of a, it's more of a thing. Like it's more of a foundation, you know? So I think like when you're working with someone else and with the significant other, it's hard to tell someone that you don't like their idea and to not take it personal. Because when you're working with each other, we have to put up like blinders, like this is a business blinder. So if, if I, she says an idea and I think that it's not sending us in the right direction and I go, oh, I don't like that. And I respond like how you would respond if you saw something you didn't like on Twitter. And I was like, well, you don't get offended when I say I don't like their marketing on Twitter. And when I said I didn't like your idea, you can't get offended either. So it's like learning to set those boundaries. But uh, yeah, it, it, was a, it was weird. But having us being together for uh, eight years now. It's just uh, you really learn the yin and yang of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, going towards like uh, you know how you mentioned meditation, yin yang. Um, your guys's podcast very much reflects like how you said a therapy session in a way where not just your guys's conversations, but the structure, how you guys do the music break, and all these little nuances to your guys's podcast gives off a very relaxed and comfortable feel where. I feel a lot of podcasts that succeed have the same kind of mentality where you feel you're just sitting in a room with somebody versus like when you guys are filming your podcast, putting the episodes up, it feels like I'm in the room with you guys just listening to a conversation. It doesn't feel I'm watching something that feels staged or fake. It just feels like real people talking, real people listening to each other. And I think it uh, really just shows in your guys' work. Um, whenever you first started the podcast and set out to do it, how you mentioned a kind of a comedy podcast, there is definitely parts of that in there, but how, at what stage did you want to take it to adding some more therapeutic kind of, uh, aspects to it? How did you know that that's the direction you wanted to go? It really wasn't the direction we knew it wanted to go. This all happened naturally. Like when I first started the podcast, I had a set of questions that I knew that I wanted to be an interview, but I wanted the questions to have a lot of meaning. So I just wanted to ask five meaningful questions that really made you dig in like that nostalgia memory bank or dig in like this, that once you bring that up, there's no other way that it can't. So like with the first question being like, where, where are you born and raised and diving into like where you're from? And that'll hit you in the face with like, wow, I'm, I'm in like my twenties and thirties. I haven't talked about where I've been born from. And I say like, what's a pastime growing up that you still do? And that makes them think. And so by the time we're like three questions in, we've talked about your childhood. We talked about where you're at now. And it's almost like they're ready to like redeem themselves by midway because they were talking about the ways that they weren't like that. And they're like, well, this is what I do now. So really the way the questions were formatted and just how the conversations went, like our third episode with Trey Donna, he's with uh, uh, We Got Next uh, Comedy. He's a really cool dude. He ended the podcast and he looked at us and he goes, dude, this felt like a therapy session. He's like, in a good way. He's like, I laughed my ass off. I talked about things I never did. And after that happened, Danielle and I were like, wow, we really like that. And the podcast always ended with advice for the listeners. Like we just like having an advice portion. So once we started getting those advice portions and we really liked that, we're like, wow, th these questions and with everything else, it really has some heart. 
So there was never really like a, an idea behind it. It kind of just happened with like, that was our energy. Like it started out in our bedroom. If you walked into our bedroom, those type of conversation, that type of vibe of compassion, all of that was already in there. So when you're coming in, it was kind of just like the perfect storm, you know? Danielle, do you have any thoughts of uh, the structure of the podcast, how you guys started kind of implementing that uh, nature to your guys' show? Uh, yeah, Jeff and I, we really bonded um, over the last couple of years with podcasts. Like we have different ones we'll talk about with each other on a weekly basis and some not as often, but like we always like, uh, it's always a topic. So once we created our own, I was excited just because I was like, I have been listening to podcasts for so long. Like I have so many different formats and like we put that energy into making something that was more personal and unique to us. And that's part of building a foundation. That's the beautiful part is because once you have a foundation, you're maintaining it. Like that's where the magic is. Like that's where like you don't know it's going to turn into more of a self-help or the funny moments or whatever you want to call it. It's just that's the magic is not knowing and just putting in that work consistently and seeing what the universe like gifts you. Now, one thing uh, with your guys' podcast is it's always very positive. And uh, one of the positive things I see you guys do a lot is you're always talking about Pittsburgh. Obviously, you guys are located in Pittsburgh. All your guests are primarily from Pittsburgh. But uh, you talk about Pittsburgh with such a love and a like a caring mentality. What is it do you think that you like the most about that city? Uh I just say growing up, I, I just love how goofy everyone is. Like everyone here is very, very funny. Like whether you like it or not, like whenever I went to film school in Florida, as soon as I went there, everything I did or like even like the words we use and the stuff we say, like, dude, you're goofy. Like you're funny. And then looking back on it, like I just feel like that vibe is sent and it also sends off like a friendly vibe. Like in the podcast I just did with this uh, a producer called Bus Crates, I was talking about how like Pittsburgh is such a funny place because, like, it's the one place where you could go to the grocery store and if you, like, accidentally run into someone and you mention that you don't live here, they're like, well, why don't you come over for some burgers and shit and watch the game? And it just is, like, it's such a communal vibe. So when I see people not putting each other on in the city and we're just like, what the fuck? Like, there's so much dopeness happening. That's why, like, oh, why don't we do a music break only shouting out Pittsburgh artists? Oh, why don't we find a format to have an artist on where we're not just talking about their art, you're finding out about their childhood and who they are. And that's how you really create like fans for them and people who like and support them. So I just love the city because I've left and I've missed it so much. And it has that magnet that pulls me back. And there's just so much goddamn talent that you're just like in shock when you see some of these people not hitting levels that they should be, you know? Yeah. I have to stay, say like the style, the swag, the vibe, like, I don't know. I just, it's when you're born and raised anywhere, like I feel like you should rep it because there's people younger than you who are from the same place. And if your goal in life is to be successful in whatever manner, like that's, that's setting a standard for other people in your area. So I always think it's important to shout out wherever you're from and be proud of it because that's where you're from. But Pittsburgh in general, just like we're awesome. I love our, I love our sense of humor, our style, black and gold. It's just, I find it just attractive. Now, you, like how you mentioned with repping the city, you guys do, like I mentioned, a very good job of repping the city, but also the people in it and what they're doing. Um, there are, of course, other podcasts in our city, but I every time I see your guys, not only, you're always shouting something out. You're always trying to show support to other creatives, whether it's the specific guests you have on or your guys' music break. Um was there a point where that was a decision for you guys or did that just feel natural for you to just go, we want to just keep talking about what people are doing? Uh, I'd say that it felt more natural because so much as an artist where you put stuff out there and you realize that just pressing a like button, just pressing a repost, how much that really does for you, like how much word of mouth is very much a thing. And when you see like people who are your friends and say they support you and they can't even press a button, to like that takes seconds and you see that it really just hurts your heart so whenever we started this podcast and we see people we're like we have a platform now we have people that actually like it so why wouldn't we 
press the like button? Why wouldn't we repost a song that comes out? Why wouldn't we? Because we know how much that means for us. Whenever we go on our notifications and someone reposts it, it just makes you feel like, wow, that, that night that I stayed up till three in the morning editing a graphic in the corner that I think only I noticed, but I think no one else will, and they repost it, that weirdly aff- like gives you the affirmation of like, wow, that was worth it. You know, it's just like, who knows? Like us reposting that could give someone the push to make that next song or to like not give up what they want to do. So it's really just like a, you help yourself by helping them because you repost them and then hopefully they'll repost something by yours down the line. And then some of their people like your stuff, like it's a lot different than you messaging someone and say, Hey, repost my thing. than doing it like the karma way where you repost three of their things and Hey, guess what? Next month they repost one thing of yours, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, it really does kind of line up with karma and a pay it forward mentality where, you know, as creatives, we all have all made something at some point or another, and it's gotten very little reaction. And uh, just you guys always pushing people and promoting them, I feel like it definitely reflects in some of your guys' successes with the episodes and the videos, where I feel like uh, sharing someone else's work is a big encourager for them to then share your stuff and just keep on going back and forth and hopefully, you know, just re-fueling uh, each other. Um, now, Jeff, you kind of grew up uh, as a fan of comedy. Um, do you want to go into that a little bit and kind of talk about how you grew up with comedy and how it's kind of affecting your life now with stand-up? Yeah, I would say that comedy was always just a very much like comfort zone for me. Like I was always a very anxious kid growing up, so I, I liked playing sports, but I never really kept stats. I was never really a big sports fan. Like, so many people would be like, wow, do you see, like, all these stats, like, how many Ben Roethlisberger, like, touchdowns he has? And I was like, no, I'm still thinking about the one time I stuttered at, like, 7-Eleven paying for something, you know? I looked like an idiot. Like, I was always just thinking so much zoomed in that I was just looking for outlets to help me feel better, you know? And comedy was just the number one. Like, one thing about my family and my dad is that he was just obsessed with comedy movies in general and, like, pop culture, like growing up, even Danielle knows this, she'll come over and my grandma will be doing Dumb and Dumber references in the kitchen and they'll just be doing movie lines. And I just grew up in a household where they just loved pop culture and movies and especially comedy. So at a young age, like one of the first movies I remember watching is Road Trip in my living room. And I'm like a young kid just watching this with my family. And we weren't really like crude, like allowed to swear around each other. But when it came to like comedy movies, they knew like, all right, the world's bad out there. So if just going to hear a swear word, it might as well be like in a good like comedy like artistic way and I'm just very grateful because like it really sculpted who I was like into comedy now like so much growing up my, I loved Ben Stiller like his comedy was just so goddamn funny like his physical comedy especially like Mike Myers like Austin Powers growing up like every Saturday and Sunday I would beg my parents to play Austin Powers because I just love the aesthetic of that movie and comedy is that could really make you feel like you're in a world and stuff and then once I started getting a little bit older, my mom would like travel for work and we'd stay up with my dad and he would uh, go on Comedy Central and we would watch comedy specials. And he was like, but if you stay up past midnight, if you can, the comedy specials are uncut. Because we would watch them and there'd be bleeps. And after like five minutes, of, like constant bleeps, we're like, I don't want to watch this. He's like, all right, but if you can stay up, like they have it. So there'd be nights where we'd stay up and we'd watch these specials. And uh, I don't know, just growing up in a household where you always hear people making jokes. You want to find out what that joke is. And luckily all those jokes they would make were awesome comedy movies. So I just grew up with an index of comedy. And then whenever I'd hang out with friends, parents, I'd be able to make jokes from older movies and have them laugh and my friends laugh. So it just felt like a competitive edge I had. Cause I wasn't like, I'm not tall. Like I was a good athlete, but I wasn't anything crazy, but comedy was my wheelhouse. Like that was the one thing that I knew that like, I could feel like my own version of my own superstar. In. So now once I like was able to find an outlet like stand up and like podcast, it was kind of just amazing. Like having something that you have all this energy and you want to put it and you just have places it can go. So yeah, I'm just very lucky that Pittsburgh is a very dope uh, place for comedy. There's so many places to do it. Um, so passionate, like the city is so passionate about art in general right now. You really see it. So yeah, it's just, it, it's affected my life so much. And now that I've gotten older, it's affected for the better. I got to meet people like you again. It got to rehash a lot of awesome friendships and relationships and better my life that if I wasn't doing stand-up, I wouldn't have had any any of these doors open, really. The nice thing about stand-up and comedy, it, obviously it's been around for quite some time, but it, it's 
having this big growth in a lot of places and it's like specifically Pittsburgh, like how you mentioned, um, and something else that's kind of also been growing a lot more lately and over like the last decade is podcasts. They've kind of started blowing up and becoming a very common thing. Do you guys think there is a specific reason or correlation behind why so many comedians or stand up people end up doing podcasts? I'd say it's just like, number one, it's probably one of the best ways I've seen from like, if I'm a fan of a stand-up comedian, like one of my favorite podcasts is Tuesdays with Stories with uh, Mark Norman and Joe List. And that's a way where you can really feel like you're actually like learning behind the scenes and you're growing like almost like a quote unquote, like you said, where you feel like you're sitting in the room friendship where they'll make a joke, a recurring joke. And you're like, <laughs> like, it's almost like it's something that you guys have as well. So I think comedians love it because even if you're not on stage, you're able to hit them with comedic time and give them content and really just grow a real fan base. Like what other way is it? Can you grow a real fan base and tell them like story where you woke up and you had like a three in the morning shit. And then you ran, we were late for the subway and you're just like telling all these behind the scenes stories that if you're on stage, it's not really the platform for it. Like, all right, but do you have a joke? Like, but you can tell that story. So it's almost like a perfect way for them to almost uh, extend that art, you know, cause art should never be put into a box. Stand up comedy, can be put into so much and you can just pull that, take the stand up out of it. You can make the comedy everywhere. So, I mean, it's literally a, a stand up comedian's best friend. So I don't know how much for Danielle. I would just say for me being a fan of comedians now hearing their podcast, it's grown my support. I've bought in so much merch. I've gone to shows just cause like, Hey, I, and then when I see them in person, I'm like episode 32, like you feel like you have like <laughs> some type of connection. So like, it, it's kind of like what we were saying, it's the perfect yin yang for the fan and stand up conversion, you know? Um, I just, this doesn't have to do with comics and podcasts, but podcasts in general, I found myself in times of life where I didn't think I had like friends that I help, were helping me level up in the ways that I was interested in maybe. And I would put on a podcast and I would have that like almost like relationship where I was having a converse or listening to a conversation like a fly on the wall of something I was interested in, but I wasn't hearing in my daily life. And people I'm surrounded by weren't necessarily interested in certain things. Uh, so it's always cool because Jeff and I have very different interests. And uh, there's times where like I'll listen to my podcast and he listens to his. And his are, they can be very different. And it's just cool to get a new perspective, learn new information, just looking for... Um, that information I think is important in day to life to help yourself level up. 100%. Um, as we talked about, you guys are very much Pittsburgh people. If you could both pick your favorite spot or place to eat in Pittsburgh, what would it be? Daniel, you go first on this one. <laughs> it has to be one. Uh, you can name as many as you want, but like you have to try to name one that's a go-to that maybe people aren't familiar with. Okay, um, this is an I don't even. This is not necessarily Pittsburgh, but Jeff and I, we love V Three Pizza. Mm -hmm. It's in Lawrenceville and in downtown. Uh, I don't think it's Pittsburgh branded, but I just have to say their pizza is so good, and like it's like create your own eight dollars flatbread pizza. I just really like their food. Yeah, they're really right, good. Yeah. A, a go-to for me is in Aetna, uh, right across the street from ID Labs and from where the old PNC Bank used to be. It's called Amato's. It's a pizza place. Mm -hmm. uh, their pizza, they do Sicilian style, and it's so thin. Like it, It's the type of pizza where I literally, me and my brother, we've eaten 12 slices in one sitting. Like It just goes down. It's so fresh. And uh, their prices are really cheap too. And I'm a buffalo chicken guy. They do like a whole buffalo chicken hoagie for five bucks, fresh bread. It's just like a mom and pop shop. Um, it, it literally, since I've been uh, ordering since a little kid, there's this guy that drives in like a little red buggy car and delivers. I went there last week. He's still delivering. Right? It's crazy. <laughs> like the place is just awesome. So yeah, I'd say a motto is an Edna. It's really good. Awesome. Um, so one last question for you guys. Uh, I feel, Jeff, whenever I look at you talk about your history with creativity, I can very much relate to it. Uh, both of us, when we were younger, we tried to just make things when we were in high school and just try to find ways to 
turn video into a creative outlet and get people's attention. You guys did uh, some sketch comedy uh, videos early on. I was doing very similar things. Uh, whenever I was on your podcast, we talked about how I was Billy Mays' ghost, and I was too young to grow a beard, so I painted one on with black paint. Uh and I just I, I feel like uh, I can very much relate because I've seen some of your guys' old videos, and we're kind of cut from the same cloth in that mentality. And now that you guys are doing the podcast, and I'm trying to you know do more of this video type thing, I see that connection again between us on how we're trying to find this creative outlet. What advice would you give to me moving forward on you know doing interviews with people and you know just creating content wise kind of in the vein of the content that you're already creating i'd say like two things number one like like you said before consistency is key like just setting that marker where if you set a date and just remaining it and just hitting it nonstop. And just like keep keeping it in like a realistic boundary too. Like you said, every episode is going to be the best episode. Don't compare it to the last. Just make sure it feels like it's the best one that week, you know. And just like give your hundred percent. Like especially before the episode, like just go into it saying like, dude, this is going to be a great episode. Like just say affirmations out loud and just be like, wow, this could be really good. And number two, Larry, you're, you're very genuine. Like you're very easy to talk to. I can tell. Like whenever you're one person, that you have a good face, you have a good vibe. That whenever something's funny or whenever you're interested it comes off well. So I think just, just, I really like what you're doing. Just try to implement a little bit more you into it. Like, I know one thing that like, I like, I really like Charlemagne the God. Like he's really good at interviewing. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things is that like, he asked the questions that we all want to say, but we'd feel like a dick for asking, but it's really just his way of being like, but no, but if I was in the room with that person, I want to ask. So I say with each guest, just ask one super Larry question that who cares if anyone else would care? Mm -hmm. Do like a Larry question. Because I think that will stem off into you at finding like, oh, I have two Larry questions I want to ask. And I think just like finding a way to put yourself into the pod, you know. Yeah, that's definitely good advice. Uh, Danielle, do you have any tips for me? Larry, I think you're a really positive guy. And I think you like uh, the, our podcast because it's positive. And I think your podcast is going to be the same vibe. And I think that's just bringing yourself and bringing your genuineness to it. I think that you are an interesting guy and I like to listen to you talk. So I'm definitely a fan. Well, thank you. Um, do you guys have anything you want to shout out, your social media handles, what you guys are working on project-wise? Uh, yeah, just make sure to follow the podcast at Babyface Assassin Podcast on all social media. Uh, we just got a Twitter. It's at Podcast Assassin. Make sure to follow that. We're going to be updating stuff like that. Um, go on the YouTube. I think this is our seventh full episode we've uploaded on there. And if you don't have YouTube, I know my dad's been watching on Facebook. I have family members who usually aren't too YouTube savvy. So we're on Facebook now. Follow us on all social media. We are going to be doing a, a sticker drop. We have a brand new logo. Actually, I'll pull it up real here. Larry actually helped us out with this logo. Like always, he does amazing work. If you can see that, it might look a little weird. I don't know if we can implement it. If you go to my page, but it's basically my head with a yin yang cut out of the top. We're going to be taking that logo and be making some stickers out of that. So please just try to support the podcast. Also follow Jeff underscore Fieldhouse. That's uh, my personal page. I upload skits. Danielle and I do um, random stand-up stuff and all that jazz. Follow me at Danielle Burnick. And that's it. I'm on all platforms. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, thank you again for being on. Uh, it's been great talking with you, and I feel like I've learned a little bit, and I cannot wait for next week's episode of the Babyface Assassin podcast. Definitely. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, thanks for having us on, Larry. Like I said before, uh, we had to separate rooms just to make sure that it's good, but I've been waiting all episode to do this. So uh, <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys, for watching this episode of From One Screen to Another. Uh, as always, you can find me at Larry D. Lane pretty much on any platform. Be sure to follow Jeff and Danielle at their respective social medias uh, and also check out their podcast. All of this stuff will be linked below in the description as well as some of the stuff will be on the screen right now. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you next week.